Hello, and welcome to Software Architecture Monday. My name is Mark Richards. I'm an independent consultant, hands-on software architect, and also the founder of developer2architect.com. In the last lesson, we looked at analyzing architecture from an aspect of learning what structural decay was. In this lesson, lesson eight, what we'll be taking a look at is what we're actually analyzing when we talk about architecture, which specifically are components. So do you remember back in Lesson 7, and by the way, if you haven't seen Lesson 7, I would highly encourage you to look at the previous lesson in order to gain a grounding of actually what we're looking for here. But when we start to analyze software architecture as seen in the prior lesson, what we're really looking at is trying to identify these particular cracks or seams, in other words, in the pylon, in the structure of our application. And that's precisely what we're going to learn how to do. Now, when we analyze architecture, one of the things that we are focusing on specifically is analyzing components of the architecture. And in this lesson, I kind of want to show you what that really means and identify the granularity that we're actually analyzing. Even though we do look at source code, we tend to roll it up into components. If we've got some sort of subsystem, let's say, or a, a layer of the architecture, maybe it's a particular macro service or just a different kind of service, a separately deployed unit, or even some sort of event processor in an event-driven architecture, within that context, we as architects define components, and these are the building blocks of an application. Now, once we define these, it's the development teams that actually build these components with classes. And let me show you an example. So, so here's a layered architecture, and you might say, well, what is a component in a layered architecture? We've never identified components. Well, in fact, you really have, because the component in any architecture really is the package structure itself. If we look at all these components in this layered architecture here, let's say that's just the business layer even, then what we're taking a look at are all of the package structures. And in fact, this particular package structure here is a component, a building block. In other words, this is the app.order.history. These five or these six classes right here handle all of the order history for this particular application. Now, microservices as an architecture style and pattern does in fact bend the rules a little bit because the fine-grained single-purpose nature of a microservice. Components defined in a microservices kind of architecture style generally become a service themselves. In other words, when you get to this level of granularity in microservices, it's not uncommon to have, and it's fairly typical, as a matter of fact, to have this one-to-one -one relationship between a component, a building block, and in fact, a separately deployed unit of software. In other words, the service. Now, let me show you an example of what I mean in terms of the context of really what we are analyzing. If this is the business layer of a particular architecture, let's just say it's an N-tiered layered architecture. As a matter of fact, these could be services. In this case, we're just going to say these are components within the architecture. What I, as the architect, would define are those building blocks. In other words, as you see here, we need some sort of inventory management, order placement, customer notification, now a way of notifying the customer, customer tracking, order fulfillment, and a reference manager for, let's say, reference data, name value pairs, or store codes, or whatever. Now, as an architect, I'm worried about these kind of building blocks, not only defining them, but also the interactions. In other words, the coupling levels and communication between these components. As you can see right here, the order placement service, or should say component, I've been doing way too many microservices. <laughs> the order placement component needs to communicate with the customer notification because it's not its responsibility to notify the customer once we placed an order. Therefore, the order placement needs to communicate with the customer notification component to say, hey, can you please send out a notification? That's what the customer notification does. As a matter of fact, the order placement, once we've placed an order, has to make sure that inventory is updated. It's not its responsibility. So it needs to communicate with inventory management and so on and so forth. And then this is what the architect is responsible for. This, in fact, is exactly what we are analyzing. Now, to give you a context, 
Let's take, for example, this reference manager. Now, as a component, all I'm defining is the fact that we need some sort of reference manager, and here's what it needs to do. Hold a cache and notify other components when that cache is updated. But you, as a developer, may in fact implement that reference manager via a package structure, app.business.refManager, in terms of all these classes. For example, a reference processor, a reference cache. Here on the right-hand side, we've got this parallel loader pattern where we've got a persistence class and a ref data loader class and a reference broker kind of manager class and utilities and stuff like this. And so the point is, as an architect, we are not concerned with the interactions of the classes within a component. And that's very important when we, it's a very important statement, as a matter of fact, when we look at analyzing software architecture. No, instead, we as architects are concerned about the interactions between these particular components of the architecture. Now, in future lessons, this has been lesson eight, components, in lesson nine, we'll be taking a look at some of the macro level techniques that we can use to identify those cracks in the pylon, leveraging this idea of components. So stay tuned next week, and we'll continue with analyzing architecture in terms of looking at some of those macro level kind of identifications, as well as kind of some kind of general ones without taking a look at source code. Then in further lessons, we'll actually take a look at how to analyze source code itself to determine those cracks in the pylon, in other words, that structural decay. So thank you very much, and be sure and stay tuned for Software Architecture Monday. Thank you.